Now the other day I was down at JCar, which is a local electronics retailer here in Australia, and I was just there to pick up a couple of little switches. But the wife pointed out something in the store window being advertised that kind of caught my interest. It was a ghetto blaster, obviously a modern one. And it was on sale for 99 Australian dollars or 300,000 Colombian pesos if you prefer. And I thought, nah, that's just going to be some cheap rubbish preying on people's nostalgia. It's going to function terribly and sound like Pip farting on a snare drum. I ain't farting on no snare drum. But later that day, the thought of it was still stuck in my head. So I did what any sane person would do. I bought one. This is the Digitech Ghetto Blaster with Bluetooth technology. It features a cassette deck for playback and recording, USB and micro SD card for playback and recording, volume bass and treble control. Wow. Crank up the tunes with this portable ghetto blaster with that classic look from the 70s and 80s. Listen to your favorite AM, FM radio stations, play MP3 files from a USB stick or micro SD card, or pop in an old audio cassette for those old time feels. Yeah, it's certainly screaming out quality here. The cassette recording allows songs to be converted to MP3 using a USB flash drive or micro SD card, and record music to a blank cassette using any audio source. So at least it lets you play back your old tapes or even archive them to a USB stick or SD card, and you could potentially even create new tapes from modern sources. It claims to have an output power of two times seven watt RMS and a frequency response of 70 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. I somehow doubt that. And some 3.5 millimeter auxiliary inputs and outputs. SD card capacity up to 32 gigabytes. It does take six D cells, but they're not included. Also, you can power it off the mains and it weighs approximately 3.2 kilos. So it's not the lightest thing in the world, which is a good sign, I guess. The weight is sign of reliability. And on the slim chance that this thing turns out to be half decent, there are options for those outside of Australia, but we'll look at that later on in the video. You'll likely find an even better option with our channel sponsor, PCBWay. Yes, PCBWay can handle all your PCB prototyping needs along with assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and so much more. They have a great shared project section where you can find all kinds of audio amplifiers or you can even upload your own design. There's even a guy who's uploaded his own 3D printable boombox, so you can even have PCBWay print that one for you. We thank PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Well, let's open this thing up, see what we got. Certainly looks shiny. Standard figure eight power cable with an Australian plug and a user manual. Looks to all be in English. Now, the star of the show. Ooh, yeah. Well, it is rather shiny. I actually don't mind the look of it. Uh, the tuning dial feels mm, average, but seems to do the job. There are some VU meters down the bottom here. So a left and a right channel VU meter, and there's some plastic on them. Sadly, there's no plastic film on the top here though. That's a bit of a shame. So it looks like over here we have our microphone. There is another one over here that isn't labeled. So perhaps it's only a microphone on this side. Uh, the speakers look like, you know, average four or five inch speakers. There are some speakers, well, what looks like tweeters up here, but whether or not they're actually connected to anything, who knows? And um, yeah, these are just plastic panels with some fake plastic screws by the looks of it. The tape deck says it's got one touch recording and auto stop. I somehow doubt it's gonna be full auto stop. It's probably just gonna be when uh, playback reaches the end of the tape, then it'll stop, but probably won't work in fast forward or rewind modes. Over on the side, we've got our headphone output and our auxiliary input and also the AC input. And on the other side, the tuning dial, micro SD and USB slot and some buttons, I guess, to control the uh, functions from these devices. Around the back, 
Risk of electric shock, do not open. Uh, Digitech, so AM and FM frequencies, tells you what batteries it takes, and obviously the power. And down here is our battery compartment. Mains power switch. And on the top, we've got our volume control, bass, treble, the transport controls for the tape deck, and some input selectors, mono, stereo, or bass boost. Why they are all on the same switch, I don't know. What if I want mono with a bass boost? And AM, FM selector. Also up the top, we have a telescopic antenna, pretty decent length. And the handle feels solid, it's not going anywhere, and it doesn't just flop around by itself, it actually has a bit of uh, resistance to it. We've got analog VU meters down the bottom and a digital level meter up the top, so are these both going to tell us the same information? Guess there's only one way to find out. Ah, we have FM radio. Well, the mono and stereo selector switch actually works, so that's always a good sign. The bass boost, I'm not really hearing any extra bass out of this thing. Okay, so I don't hit a content match. Let's try and hook this up to Bluetooth. Ooh, and it just said something. Bluetooth pairing. Bluetooth pairing. So it looks like it shows up as a CS2473. Bluetooth connected. Hooray. So let's just play something from the YouTube audio library. Okay. We have a blue light flashing around the side here. Let's see if these buttons... Yeah, they may not do anything because I'm not playing a full track list. Play pause does work though. That's a bit dodgy. So I'm not seeing any movement on any of these level meters. Let's just turn it up. So it appears both these level meters react to the same thing. So they're just output meters and we've got a choice of analog ones down here or digital ones up there. But um, yeah, they only seem to change when you crank up the volume to the maximum. I think the tweeters are just there for show. So the buttons on the side do appear to work when there's more than one track in the playlist, so we can skip forward and obviously skip back. Still not sure what this does, but I'm sure reading the manual we can find out. And here we are, they do provide a downloadable copy of the manual, so the mode stop record button, which is the one up the top here, uh, we press and release it to switch between Bluetooth, USB or microSD card. When recording, press and release this button to stop recording. And then if we combine this button with the forward or back buttons, that'll switch between folders. Looks like you can also press and hold the forward and back buttons to delete a track. And this record rep button, you can press and hold to record the audio source that you're playing back on the device. So if you're playing a tape or the radio or something, you can record that onto the micro SD or the USB stick. And when playing back tracks, you can use it to repeat a single track or repeat all tracks. The manual itself seems to have a decent amount of detail, so it looks like they at least put some effort into it. But there are some funny bits in here, like when using headphones, the internal speakers will be muted. Note, when headphones are connected to the headphone output, the internal speakers will be muted, just in case you didn't understand it the first time. If there is too much bass, yeah, I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. What if there's too much treble? What do I do then? The technical specs are a little bit different to what's on the box. Output power 28 watts peak, which is basically a useless measurement, uh, similar to 2000 watts PMPO that you used to see back in the early 2000s. Frequency response 80 to 10 kilohertz, which sounds a bit more like it. The box claimed 70 to 20 kilohertz. Five inch drivers, Bluetooth specs. Yeah, there's no apt X on this kind of thing. 
supported cassette types, of course type 1, the rest of this is all a bit of a joke. It does not have any biasing for chrome, metal or type 3 which you'll never come across anyway. Just because those tapes will fit in here doesn't mean it supports them. USB micro SD file type, MP3 and WAV, so there's no mention of FLAC or AAC but we'll test that out shortly. Uh, micro SD needs to be formatted to FAT32 and the rest we pretty much saw on the box. So let's have a look at USB and micro SD playback. So I'll throw in a micro SD card. I did briefly test this out off camera just so we don't waste too much time. So if we go to Bluetooth again, Bluetooth. Pairing. Bluetooth. Connected. it'll automatically connect to Bluetooth, but if we push the mode button on the side, that'll start playing off our micro SD card or USB stick if you've got that inserted. And of course, as soon as you remove it, Bluetooth. Pairing. Bluetooth. Connected. it goes back to Bluetooth mode. Left. And I recorded a quick left-right left test. Left. It is playing through the correct speakers, even though I'm only wearing a mono lavalier mic, so you won't be able to tell anyway. So at least the stereo mode actually works correctly. Now a little quirk I found with USB sticks, these two guys are USB 3 sticks, they're both 32 gigabytes, and it would not recognize them. However, it did recognize an older 32 gig USB stick. Now they're all formatted as FAT32, but XFAT also worked with this device. And uh, yeah, this 16 gig SD stick, which is also USB 3 capable, worked just fine. So a bit of a quirk with USB sticks, but certainly with the micro SD cards, I tested this up to a 200 gigabyte micro SD card and it still worked just fine, formatted as XFAT because FAT32 is sort of limited when it comes to partition size. Now I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a constant buzz from this thing. And that's with everything turned off, it seems to be coming from over this side. So when it comes to recording on a USB stick or SD card, you simply select the input that you want to record from, start playing, and hold this button. And you can see the light will flash all different colors. And then press that to stop recording. And on the SD card, you'll find a new folder with your recordings in it. Let's have a look at this one. And you can see that the volume is quite low on this file, but uh, the original track looks more like this. So I don't know why it's recording everything so low. It also records everything at a constant 128 kilobits MP3. Let's just amplify this. Bring it up, say 10 decibels. So they're pretty similar in amplitude. So this is the original track at 320 kilobits per second. And here's our recorded track. Original. Now you may be saying, well, it's 128 kilobits, can't expect too much. And that was probably true for early MP3s back in the late 90s, but encoders have improved a lot since then. For example, I transcoded this track using Audacity from the original file at 128 kilobits per second, and it sounds like this. Compare that to the recording. And to the original. The 128K encoding that I did sounds a whole lot better than the one from the stereo. So whatever hardware encoder they've used in this thing is complete rubbish. It sounds more like a 64 kilobit MP3. So this thing is terrible at recording to USB sticks and micro SD. I would do not recommend using it for that. Now I did also test out FLAC and AAC playback and it just ignores those files. So you can either play back WAV or MP3. Looking inside the tape deck itself and I can already tell from that little metal spring there that this is a tenacian mechanism. So it's the only mechanism that I think is still being made and they're pretty poor quality in general. 
And looking inside the deck, I can see there's a sensor for the record tab, but there's no other sensors along there. So if you have a chrome or a metal tape, they have extra notches to tell the cassette player what type of tape it is. Alternatively, some tape decks have buttons to select between chrome or metal, but uh, this has none of that. So it definitely does not support anything other than normal position cassette tapes. So I think first we'll try out the Woe and Flutter, see what it's like. So to test this out, I'm using the headphone output into this little USB converter box so we can play this on the computer. And I'll be using this test tape which has a 3150Hz tone and the WFGUI software which is free to download. And it's around 0.17 and the frequency is a little bit high so it is playing a little bit fast as well. That should say 3150 if it was playing at the correct speed. Not terrible on flutter figures, but I've certainly seen better. Then again, I've seen a lot worse. Let's try just a regular tape that I've recorded on a different deck. Okay, it does look to favor the right channel a little bit. So usually if it's favoring one channel over the other, it means the heads are a little bit out of alignment. In fact, Pushing in on the door fixes that. Left, right, left, right, left, right. At least our left, left right test right, is working left, properly. Right, left, 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 yes. right, <laughs> left. It seems to be better if you push in a little on the door. Let's just quickly try a pre recorded tape. Oh, yeah, and you can really see how much it favours the right channel bounces out when I push the door in. I'm guessing that's all down to this spring over here. I guess they tensioned it up a little bit too much and that's pushing out on the door. Whereas, you know, you want it to obviously open, but uh, you don't want it to actually push out on the cassette. So it would appear this thing is indeed cheap junk, but I'm sort of curious as to where all this weight comes from. So let's open it up, take a look inside. Yep, no surprises on the inside. This is our standard Tanashin or Tanishin mechanism, and it's got a permanent magnet for the erase head. So all the recordings that you do on this are gonna be fairly noisy. Not that you'd wanna really record anything on this anyway. Uh, over here is our input selector and also our tuners for the AM and FM radio. And down there is our AM radio coil. Over here is our USB and Bluetooth module board. Uh, the speakers, yeah, that's probably where most of the weight comes from. And they are an 8 ohm 15 watt. And the tweeters are definitely fake. They're just shiny plastic discs with a little bit of glue on the edges. Uh, this board here must go to our level meter and also the stereo and power indicator. Dynamic, sound, empty, full, stereo. Just throwing words there. And the analog VU meters just hook up to this board, so they are just directly connected to the same level meters, basically. Over here, we've got our mains transformer, and this is actually a linear power supply, so that it does have a bridge rectifier. And uh, this looks like our little amplifier circuit over here. I'm kind of curious as to where that buzzing comes from. So this is now live, so I'm not gonna poke my fingers in there, but yeah, it's definitely just this transformer just vibrating that little bit. So it could be possible to add some dampening to that, but uh, I don't think I'll really bother, to be honest. Of course, the level meter and these VU meters are completely pointless because they only monitor the output level and you have to turn the thing all the way up in order for them to do anything. And trust me, you do not want to listen to this thing at full volume. In fact, even medium or low volume just hurts your ears after a while. So I think we should close this thing back up for now. As expected, this thing turned out to be a polished turd. Now, I did rush this video a little bit because I was trying to get it out while this thing was still on sale, but it's probably no longer on sale and that's not a bad thing because you're not gonna waste your money on it. And if you already did buy one of these, well, sorry, but uh, at least you're not alone. 
I also mentioned that it was possible to get these overseas and again I wouldn't recommend it but you can buy these obviously from China. You can also import a few thousand of these and have your own branding on it but again it's going to be complete rubbish. So if you see one of these for sale under a different brand name do not buy it. It is junk. If you insist on having something that looks like an old school boombox, you can't go wrong with an old school boombox. You might have to do a little bit of cleaning, but it's probably gonna sound better, which that one actually does, than something that you can buy new today. If you wanna have your tapes archived or you wanna create new cassette tapes, I'd recommend looking out for an old cassette player. Uh, as long as it's tested and working, you can't really go wrong. All you'll probably want then is something that you can use to convert analog audio into something that's digital over USB, so you can use it with Audacity, and then you can play back and record your own tapes, and it's gonna sound a lot better than trying to do it with something like this, uh, especially the MP3 recording on this thing. And that's the problem with these kind of modern cassette players or cheap record players. They can make people think that these formats really did sound awful when in fact it's just these new devices that have really cheap junky mechanisms making the old formats sound worse than they actually are. So whatever you do, don't buy one of these. If you want Bluetooth streaming, you can find one of these little Bluetooth speakers. You can even get some of them with SD card slots. And even this thing sounds better than the speakers on this. And it's compact, easily rechargeable, everything you'd want in a Bluetooth speaker. But I think that's gonna be it for this one. I don't plan on looking at this again. I mean, unless I get really bored and wanna try and improve on it somehow, I guess leave a comment if you'd like to see that. But um, yeah, I'm not touching this thing anymore for now. So as always, thank you all for watching. A huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. If you wanna do the same, links to that are down in the video description. You'll get ad-free early access to all videos. But until next time, thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, all that stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, the AM, yeah, I didn't bother testing that out. There's a whole bunch of lights in here creating all kinds of electrical noise, so there's no chance of getting AM radio in this room. And uh, the batteries, I don't even have D-cells on hand. What am I going to do with this junk? <sighs> oh, I thought I liked the look of it, but I don't like the look of it anymore. <laughs>